What's up guys, it is Sam here from Sam and Gino and today I'm going to do a bit, something a bit kind of different. I'm just going to do basically kind of like a travel podcast on stuff that I've done uh, basically over the last couple of, well, last two months or so, traveling like the Mediterranean countries of Portugal, um, Italy and Greece. Basically it's going to talk about like what my thoughts are on traveling the Mediterranean, the cost of it and how it's going to surprise me and like what I live in any of these three countries and kind of issues with each and then I'm going to go basically like kind of a ranking on the countries as well. So like my thoughts are on traveling these countries, it is absolutely amazing. It's great to see all of these different places. As you move across, the cultures are quite different between Portugal, Italy and Greece. Um, they're similar but, but different. And like we started in Portugal and we were there for quite, like quite a while really in Lisbon. And it's a great city, great things to do, like the food is good um, as well and there's plenty to do. It's definitely probably the most livable out of the ones that I've been to is, is Lisbon because um, it does have high speed internet which is really good if you're trying to do like remote working and stuff. It's definitely the best. The internet that we had in Italy on the Amalfi Coast, look I know on the Amalfi Coast is probably not the best place to get good internet. It wasn't the best there either. And Greece has just been an absolute nightmare for internet. So, yeah, that, that's kind of the thoughts of it so far on the like the internet and the different kind of slightly different kind of cultures. But there's a big contrast between like Portugal is very very easy to, to to get around. The buses are very easy. The trams are easy. Um, all that's kind of look. It's fairly straightforward. And in Italy, we also kind of had no problems getting around because um, we use the ferries. We use taxis uh, to get around the Amalfi Coast, but if you're doing it like a public transport, I can imagine that it would be more difficult to do um, because they're just you're relying on public transport and are not actually meant to be that reliable on the Amalfi Coast. But then when it's come to Greece, public transport here doesn't work on Google Maps, so you can't rely on that um, at all because it won't make sense to you. So. We've just, you've kind of had to go to like the old ways of doing it, like going to the bus station and actually trying to figure out where to go and how much is it going to cost because you can't see any of this stuff online, which is kind of annoying if you're trying to plan trips that are like outside of the main tourist areas. Um, also like in Greece and Crete and in mainland Greece, you do need a car if you want to get to the main areas. Like we rented a car for three days in Crete and in Thessaloniki we relied on like tours to kind of bring us to the different places but you could like rent a car there and obviously see it in your own time but we decided just against against doing that but yeah so that's the cons really like Portugal you can get around pretty well on public transport it's pretty okay um, Italy we had no issues but then again we were traveling like the Amalfi Coast and Greece yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare to get around using public transport. You you kind of do need a car unless you're in Athens. Athens is pretty, pretty good. You've got the metro, um, which makes it very easy to navigate, even like from here to the airport, all that kind of stuff. So that's going to just touch you on like the public transport of it. And yeah, so like there's obviously lots to see in all of these locations. Like Portugal, we had loads of stuff to see. Malfi Coast, you've got kind of endless towns around there for like a full week to go and see. And yeah, Crete, you've got all of the like great beaches, Thessaloniki, you've got loads of day trips and you've got the access to the beaches that we didn't actually do. Um, but there's loads to do in these locations if you just kind of plan it out well. So that's a, a massive highlight. So yeah, never running out of things to do while we were here. Um, but then you're kind of thinking, if it's somewhere I want to live in any of these three countries, it's when you kind of talk to locals, um, especially in Greece here, the wages are not very high. And I found it a lot more expensive than I thought it was going to be. So you, you, I imagine there's a lot of people here that are actually really struggling with the cost of stuff. It doesn't um, really fit too well. Like So I was talking to people in Thessaloniki and they said that their average wage would be about 800 euros after tax um, a month, which is pretty low considering like groceries and stuff is pretty close to what it is in Ireland um, and then going out food is considerably cheaper when you're going out but alcohol like beers and cocktails and wine like they're pretty much the same price like as as home like so 
Yeah, Greece, as well as the internet issues, it's not somewhere that I could live, but it's definitely a great place to visit. It's probably my favorite out of the three to visit for a holiday. Um, Italy and Naples, again, it was just chaos inside Naples the time we were there. Amalfi Coast is not really somewhere where you would go to live. And Naples, um, I found it extremely chaotic, like, and I don't think it'd be somewhere that I, I would personally live. And out of the places we've visited in Portugal, Lisbon, I think is livable. I think the wages are a bit better as well, but ideal scenario, you would want to be bringing like an Irish wage and living there because stuff isn't that much cheaper. Eating out is a bit cheaper, but drinks and stuff and uh, doing activities, like it's pretty much similar enough to, to Ireland really. Um, so if you had an Irish wage living in Lisbon, it would be very good, especially because of the high speed internet that's everywhere and you've got 4G signal everywhere. Um, it would definitely be the pick out of the three to live. Greece overall is great to visit, but then there's nowhere kind of just like the Amalfi Coast anywhere, even like going around Crete and Thessaloniki and stuff, nothing kind of compares to the views that you do get there. So that's kind of covering a bit of like what I live in them and the issues with, with each one. And the kind of ranking is feels a little bit unfair on ranking these in like a particular order because they're all great places to visit. But if I was going as a tourist, I would probably go to Greece first because it's kind of built for tourism. There's lots of the different like beaches and stuff you can go to. Um, you've got the mountains. Um, you can rent the car pretty easily. The food is really, really good. And yeah, I think Greece overall as a tourist destination for me personally, it has been probably been the best place because it has a bit of everything and it's kind of easy to access this stuff if once you kind of get used to how you can get around here. Then it's probably Italy and then Portugal. Um, one of the main issues I had with Portugal is like when you went down to the water, it was still freezing. Um, it's been extremely warm in Italy and the Greece. It's been so, so warm in the water, like which is a massive plus. So that's for tourism, I would go in that order. But to live, it would actually just be the reverse. So it would be Portugal first, then Italy, then Greece. Um, as are some of the issues that I've highlighted. Like, so yeah, look, that's kind of my thoughts on what's been happening, like traveling Mediterranean, what I think of these countries, the cost of it, uh, thoughts on getting around. And look, hopefully it kind of provides you like some insight to what these countries are actually like and working in these countries and what it would be like if you actually moved here, um, some of the issues that you may face. Like, So, hope you enjoyed this, hope it's kind of something you may have learned from as well. And look, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.